Greg Long in the building from We Are Triumphant! Yeah, hell yeah! Woo! Hell this yeah. Entrance music, dude. Hell yeah. How have you can been, we, dude? Can we pull up the uh, entrance music for Stone Cold, please? Uh, <laughs> that I don't have. I got a lot of buttons, but I don't have that one. But, uh, sir, <laughs> how have you been? For, uh, for those that may not know who you are, can you please properly introduce yourself? Let us know whereabouts in the world you are at the moment and plug anything you'd like. I'm in Los Angeles. Uh, the Valley, to be more specific. Um, my name is Greg Long. I'm the record label owner of We Are Trumpet, uh, Grotesque, Life or Death, among other things. And um, I'm here to smoke some weed and, and talk about music. Let's go. Smoke weed every day. How do you balance all, all the different labels and projects, man? How do you do that? Uh, I mean, to be honest, like I've been in front of a computer for like, 12 hours a day since I was like in third grade. So it's not, I used to be like super obsessed with video games to where I'd play them like, like for a lot, like competitively, even as a, as a kid. And then one day I was like, I should probably put my time into something that's going to like, and this is before like esports were like huge and everything. And like people were making tons of money and streamers were huge and everything. So I was like, I got to figure out a way to like put my energy into something that's going to be a little bit more beneficial at the end of the day. And, you know, for me, like music, music and video games, and it's going to sound corny because it's the same for everybody, but uh, specifically music, you know, that's my escape as a, as a younger, as a younger kid. And uh, so is video games. So both of those things I kind of gravitated towards as far as spending a lot of my time, just because, you know, at the end of the day, when you, when you want to escape stress, the third one's probably weed, but the, but the first two is definitely weed and Oh, I mean, sorry. Music and video games. <laughs> what? Um, but yeah, that's, that's about it. I've been doing, uh, we were trying, I got a notification on my Twitter the other day. They were like, uh, congratulations on your 12th anniversary of being on Twitter with a We Are Trumpet account. I was like, holy shit, does that mean I started We Are Trumpet 12 years ago? I like, I don't, I, you know, you don't know the exact date that you start something when you're right. 10, 12 years into it. I know it was, a long ass time ago, but that's awesome. Congratulations. 12 <laughs> you know, years is a long time to be in the game, man. Hell yeah. Uh, absolutely. when you said, when you said you were a nonstop gamer, what's one video game that nobody can beat you at? You're just the best at this one. Oh man. I, I used to say UFC, the newer one, the, the UFC four, but, uh, I got this one artist that our, our record is like 40, 40 wins. to like, to like, uh, three wins on my side he's just an absolute Dang. beast so usually it'd be that game is where i play people that's like the couch game i can beat people on you know um but yeah before, probably ufc before we <laughs> before we play uh some of the Aust I'm familiar with the genres that they're like is that a, is that a guy or a girl singing? i, I think and i think high pitch singers low-key love that by the way dude i think they do they're too like, yes. but it also it, it gives them this like extra thing about them that like is a little bit questionable. When I first worked with trainers back in the day, dude sounds like a moose. Dude sounds like, he sounds like, <laughs> in, 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 you know what I mean? Like he, he has insane vocals that I hadn't really heard like that from before in like the heavy community. So it's like, you know, any way to stand out vocally, which is obviously hard. Some people do it by just having a super high range. Some people do it by having an incredibly low range. Um, the tone of their voice, you know what I mean? Just like, uh, it, it's, it's kind of what I look out for. It's, you know, my job at the end of the day is showing people, showing people artists. And if I'm going to show a hundred thousand kids an artist, you know, I want the highest amount of people to stick around or question what they're listening to, or at least like show some interest. So we want people who are going to stick around. So like the, the more interesting vocally it is, the easier it is for people to say, wait, wait a minute, like maybe I'll wait for the drums to come in or maybe I'll, like it's like it's easy for us to convince people to like this deserves your attention. You know, if you just have a good voice, but you're not like, you know, like the, I got you're you. going to be in a good band. You know what I mean? It's that's like how it is, you know, so 
And that's what, and, and when you don't have millions of dollars behind you and it's not the major labels, like you have to depend so much on your craft, so much on your vocals, so much on the songwriting to like really cut through. And like these kids don't have 40 different studios to work out of with 20 different engineers and 70 different songwriters. You know what I mean? Everyone's doing this in their houses at their jam spots and then doing the demos and then going recording or recording themselves. So it's like, it's pretty easy to tell like who's meant <laughs> who's meant to, to be something bigger at the end of the day, you know? So like I'll listen to fucking half the day will be spent doing monotonous things like setting up ISRC codes or filling out metadata or filling out a pitch sheet to Spotify, which probably won't even get read, or you know what I mean? Like uh, all that kind of stuff. But the other part is me sifting through and, and heavy music and like what I call anthem anthem emo music, which is just like hook driven produced pop punk music or just, you know, rock music that isn't for your dad, <laughs> you know? So that's kind of like how the day is spent, you know, and you throw in some smoking here and there, maybe a break to play a video game and, and come back and refresh. Sounds that's, like a pretty good a, day. That's about it. Sounds like a pretty damn good day to me out of, uh, <laughs> I do want to do some trivia with you, Greg. I ask you this. Do you have any hot sauce around? Now, here's the thing. I'm going to let you pick the trivia. But if I stump you on it, are you are you down to do a swig, a swig of hot sauce? One sec. Let me look. This is a good start. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> While he's grabbing that, you guys got to let me play Coletta. Coletta's on his roster also. This is so good. Tell me, tell me what you think about this. I, dude. They're probably my second uh, favorite that you got on, on Trump for real. I dude, love Coletta. When my friend told, told me to check them out. Um, and they had 300 monthly listeners when I found them. But that's what I mean. Like, I didn't give a, I didn't give a shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know that they could have had 10 monthly listeners at that point because... You they're know, just different. Yes, they're different. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, they've got 300 monthly listeners. That's so kind of like okay, so that's gonna suck. Like <laughs> growing up, you know, getting up to like 100k or 10k, 20k, all that's gonna suck. But you know, like I said, my job at the end of the day. By the way, I couldn't find any hot sauce. More on that at 11. Uh, <laughs> um. But yeah, they were, they were just super, they were just fucking super good. They, they stood out to me super heavily. It was like, it was, you know, I'm a, I'm a obvious, I'm a fan of Dance Gavin Dance. Coletta has a little bit of that vibe in there, especially their older stuff. But their newer stuff, especially the thing you just played, has almost like zero screams in it. And it almost feels like, like a, it's like, it's like, it's like if Dance Gavin Dance was mixed with like Tame Impala or something or, or like something super like brute. It's like, it also, I get like very like psychedelic vibes listening to them. I don't get that with any of these like prog hardcore bands. You know what I mean? So it's like immediately. And also his voice is fucking super high. It's also, also sounds ridiculous, you know? So I do want to play Monty also, but before we do, I do want to do the trivia. What movie or TV show have you seen more than anything? Where if I ask you about this movie or TV show, you will not get stumped. You don't obviously you couldn't find the hot sauce, no big deal. You have to hit the <laughs> blunt for 20 seconds straight without exhaling. Is your is your that, that works for me. Cool. I'll All I'll right. give you a second to think about it. Your favorite, your not your favorite, but the the movie or TV show you've seen the most, or if I ask you trivia about it, you will not get stumped. I'm gonna play Monty. I remember you telling me about a bunch uh, back in the day. Do you think? Of, do you think of a movie or TV show? Yeah, a couple. I could probably do anything on like original uh, Star Wars or Lord of the Rings. If it was Star Wars, what episode? Oh, that's what I mean. Like uh, the original three, not not like not the ones that came out like in the two thousands. Like right, right. The the seventies like, ones. The seventies ones. Yeah. Okay. But is there one in particular that you've seen more or just I can pick? You're about to ask me trivia on it? Um, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> I'm going to do terrible on, on either one. Just because I've seen it a lot doesn't mean I know all the factoids. But I, anyone you pick, probably Empire Strikes Back. 
Okay. I've also seen Hannibal a lot. <laughs> I've seen a lot of a lot of random around movies. I'll I'll see if I can find something. JB, do you have another question for Greg? So, uh, with your label, is it more exclusive to you finding the talent that you are going for, or do you have a, a way for people to submit? Yeah, I mean, I've always had submissions, and like my email has always been open. And I've, you know, there's been, but I'll tell you, there's only been a few times that I've ever signed anyone off a submission, and and like part of that is because a lot of the submissions aren't the best, aren't like the best, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I get that. Um, and on top of that, it's an ego thing. Like when I find something personally, when I find something and it's like amazing and no one knows about it yet, I feel like I can put my flag in it and it feels, I feel so much more a part of it as opposed to if someone was like, Hey, check this out. I think it's really good for you. You know what I mean? I like, it's like, a, like imagine going to the doctors or like being told like, Hey, this is good for you. You should do this. Instead, instead, you do that on your own, and you find that conclusion. And you're like, "Fuck yeah!" So, so it's kind of like, uh, you know what I mean. So that's why I also that tell people, sense. it's, you know, if I if you show me something and it's an eight eight out of ten, and I find it myself, I'm gonna be like, "This is fucking. This is the best shit out here." It's a nine out of ten. What do you mean? Yeah. You know. So it's it's like that personal personal feeling for it. So like, yeah, I'll go through submissions. Um, but more often than not, it's like, you know, not up to par, you know, which is expected. And so, you know, we're not always sifting through the submissions as much as we should be. I'll tell you, I do every now and then we'll ask people, I'll make a status or something. Be like, what is everyone listening to? Um, what should I be listening to? You know what I mean? And I, I would get a few hundred comments and sift through that. And I would find some cool stuff in there. Usually when I ask the general public, there's like way better, way better uh, suggestions than if I'm just to check my inbox. You know what I mean? Because um, I literally have like I have like rappers from like India hit. Like, you, know, my, <laughs> you get everything. You get everything. Stuff, and, like I just I can't connect with it at, at all. Or you know what I mean? Or it's like I can't get over the accent with the rapping. I, it's like it's. And it's nothing against them in India, but it's like, that's just, it's just such a wide, we get such a wide net of submissions, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, we can't work with every artist that sends in, but like, we definitely are open to listening stuff. I would tell people the best thing you can do is be annoying. Cause you know, I get a thousand messages a day, not my weekend to be at one of those artists, not to say that it was annoying, but he called my friend phone number he called like one someone that i had lived with he called he emailed me on my work email he emailed me on my old email that i don't check anymore he you know what i mean like i've heard those songs you, you know so like if you were you know if you want to get signed to a label say like you want to get signed to rise or sumerian or any of these labels out here just fucking hit them up until you hear no you know because that's the only way you're going to really know. If you hit it's really good advice. Nothing, he, they, you know what I mean? Dude could have been hung over that morning. Dude could have taken a shit twice as long than he normally does and missed your email. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. you don't want to be like, oh, I reached out to every email and no one got back to me. Well, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like the same thing as walking out in your backyard and asking for a record deal to the sky. <laughs> you know, if you're not going to hear anything back, you know, then like... what? You got to try, you got to be a little bit more persistent. And if you have what it takes, like not even what it takes, but if you have something a label is going to be interested in, they're going to know pretty quickly. You know what I mean? If they mm. take, listen to your stuff or they, you know what I mean? Take 30 seconds to listen to it. You know, it only takes 30, 20, 30 seconds for someone to be like, oh, oh this actually sounds pretty. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, they've got this many. Oh, okay. All right. And then, you know what I mean? I think the problem is in like our scene is that there really isn't a lot of labels uh, that are really developing artists. It's more so they're signing artists when they're already, you know, when they've, you, you, like, I don't think any label out here would ever touch Coletta at 300 monthly listeners, regardless of how cool they sounded. I just don't think anyone would do it. I don't think, and that's like, that's kind of where I've seen all my success from. Like, neck deep, 
they had zero monthly listeners when I found them. They, they didn't even have a fa- they didn't have a full band. You know, they, there wasn't even a real drummer. It was their his brother programming the drums, and they had a guitarist, and that was about it. And like, you know, sometimes you got to take it's a, it's a risk reward thing, you know. And that's kind of where I've been able to be a, so successful is because I'm not really com- like competing with all these other labels trying to sign this act that already has millions of streams, hundreds of thousands of listeners sales history all this stuff where they're getting this big advance all that complicated shit i'm signing people who you know these other labels you know don't would just wouldn't even approach them you know not because like they're just in a different league altogether you know what i mean um but there's a lot of that but being there first is what allows me to sign these artists that are able to get really big because i find them they're you know i know that they're amazing we can throw gasoline on whatever they've got started already and just like see where it goes, you know? But like, I don't, I, I don't like personally see, like, I would say, I would actually say, I'd take that back. I would say over the last four or five years, I would say Sharp Tone has done a lot for metalcore bands, like newer bands, you know what I mean? Especially like in that scene. Um, and there's other smaller labels like Mutant League that does like pop punk stuff. But like, I don't see anyone just like, just signing new, like fret, just dope artists all the time that don't, you know, necessarily aren't super developed yet. You know what I mean? Um, and like, which is good for me because let's, I can sign, I get my pick of the litter, you know what I mean? But, and then at the same time, I can still go after bigger bands, but it goes back to the whole thing of, it's not as exciting for me to sign someone who's already sem- semi-successful or established. I don't get to feel as like I'm as uh, responsible for it. And you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I like to give myself pats on the back internally. I'm not like going around telling people to be like, this band wouldn't be shit without me or anything like that. But inside, I know like my contribution to, <laughs> to people's, career and i'm able to like you know i'm not a vocalist of a band but i know i've like at least had some sort of impact on my favorite genres directly around me just like working in them and for me that's kind of like where i get fulfillment uh from doing this you know what i mean it just it comes back to a selfish personal thing like it's like i like being the person who turns people on to dope shit and i like being there first And I like to say I did their first EP, their first album. You know what I mean? I that's like, and what I always tell people is, it's like, dude, what are your favorite records from the artists that you love? Because for me, it's always the first EP and the first two albums that come after that. You know, usually, yeah. So like, from a, I'm not like a, you know, I don't have like 20 person staff or anything like that. I have a few like assistants and like I get help and obviously like graphics and stuff like that, but. Like for the main, the main chorus is all cooked. It's all cooked by me. So it's like, I've got to love what I'm doing. I've got to love the artists I get behind. Uh, And it's just, yeah, I mean, I will sign a bigger artist. I've signed bigger artists, you know, and I'm not, and the bigger artists who are listening to this are like, Greg, you don't love. Thing that has already been floating on its own has got a semi decent ship built already and i just get on and start blowing wind in the sails you know what i mean it's like a different feeling entirely i feel like for developing artists you know that could be the most elaborate answer I've, I've, we've ever gotten from uh from any question we've ever asked anyone I'm just after being... i finished i was like fuck i just ranted for <laughs> 10 minutes that was like a five minute response, but you answered and were so honest. So I, you covered so many things in, in one long question. That's awesome. But this could be the most important question we've asked all day. In the Empire Strikes Back, C-3PO is always telling people this when he first meets them. How many language is he fluent in? The number did. Turn it off. I'm not going to know the number of times he asks. I don't even know what he asks all the people. He always he tells said, people, I'm fluent in this many languages. And he says a number. Let's ask, let's ask Google. 
C3PO says. <laughs> I think we got him. I think yeah, we got him. I think, not, I, I think you roasted me on that one. Tell me about Anson. Who's Anson? Anson. Anson's a great, a great man. Also living out here in Los Angeles, doing crazy things. He just like brokered some crazy deal in his in his day job for like streaming apps. So like the Roku, the Roku app like has now has like some new streaming platform on it that Anson Anson works for Crackle. You know who Crackle is? You remember? Crackle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he now they he just like did some crazy deal with them uh, to set up like a streaming service on all the Roku TVs. You know. So like, we're gonna try and work some music into into that. So hopefully he can try and get, get a partnership through it or whatever. But that'd be great, great for him. Hell yeah! So it's like automatically already on the app. It's just one of his jams or something. That'd be that'd be sweet. It's like the U two thing. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Fire! I've never heard him. I've subbed. He's actually, That's fire. He's actually delivered me uh, my first song that I've actually been on with a million streams on it. Really. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I like I said, I, I <laughs> it's hilarious to me. Now we, we have to play it. We have to bring it up. But play uh, Anson's cover of Hot Girl Bummer and go to like probably like two minutes and 30 seconds in and then just let it play. I think it's, only, I think it's the only time I've done gang vocals in the past in the studio, but. You actually got down this time? Catchy too. That's Anson right there doing that one? Yeah. Dope. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna check out more of his stuff. I get, oh. to thank, I get to thank him for eternity for me sounding goofy, super goofy, and uh, <laughs> and have a million streams on Spotify on it. I love it. I love it. Uh, Drex got the question correct. The answer was six million languages. What? what? C3PO. Oh, I landed on painful tattoo. So, sir, I can tell you personally, I think my most painful tattoo is like in my like chest plate area where there's no meat right there. That area was like, like dead center, dead center where there's like you, you're just tapping on bone right there. That to me was like yeah, the that, most painful. That's, that's my answer too for for the, the most painful spot. Really? My, I, my, I don't know about yours, my situation was the worst though. The guy, like, first of all, it was a friend and he was like an apprentice and he just started doing it. He just, and like, it, it came out amazing, but the, he does the outline and he steps back and he's like, okay, I'm just gonna have to go over this outline like one more time. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, it was, it's terrible. <laughs> it was like the outline is like one of the worst parts, you know? But yeah, dead sternum super is disgusting. I, I, the head's not bad. I this dead sternum is definitely way more painful than the head, the throat. And then I, I'm afraid to do my stomach, dude. That sounds like fucking a nightmare. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't have my I stomach done either. <laughs> I've got like, I, well, I've got about, my I've, ribs. Oh, ribs? I have one side of my ribs, and I have, like, two pieces about this size, like, about, un under my your, belly button. What about your kneecaps? I do not have my caps done. But I'm working I, on my leg I'm right now. I've got my legs done but my knees, and that's what I, I'm definitely, I have to do it to, because it's the only thing missing, you know? Yeah. It's on the legs. And that's, like, that's the next, you know, I would say, for anyone, top three most painful spots to get tattooed, kneecaps, dead sternum on your chest, and rib cage. Yeah. And stomach and your stomach. So <laughs> your rib cage was really bad for me also. Um JB, let's do final questions. What what is your final question, sir, for Greg? And then we'll let him go. He's been an excellent guest. Um, what is let's see, what is your favorite strain of weed? <laughs> uh there's this one called Durban Poison that I oh, have yeah. I've had recently. Mm. And uh, that one's pretty good. And then I also I sent you a uh, I don't know if you want to play it, if we have time, but I sent you a link to Misfortune's record that they're working on, and I want you to play Black Pixie because I want to see your I want to watch you guys' faces as as you listen to this song. <laughs> okay, one second. I'm gonna switch profiles. Black Pixie. 
It's oh yeah, not, I see it. It's not even. I don't even think it's like mixed yet. But dude, this song. If this song doesn't hit, I don't know what song is gonna hit. You know I got what it. Mean? I got it. Here Stereo. we go. How much of how how much am I allowed to play of it? Oh, it's only a thirty-two oh. second sn snippet. Okay. No, play a uh, play. Go go down. It should be the whole shebang. Yeah, go to uh, Black Pixie and play that. You can play the whole thing. I can play the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's superb. It's superb. I think we have time for one final question. Uh, so this has been a blast, though, man. I appreciate you doing this and uh, totally getting stoned with us and everything. But uh, what is what is one mistake? We've kind of gotten over the advice stuff earlier when I usually ask about that. But uh, my final question is, what is one mistake you always see starting up bands do that you're just tired of and you, you just want to tell them, hey, don't do this when you're first people starting are gonna fucking, People are going to hate my answer. You ready? This is saucy. You ready? Stop practicing once a week to play fucking three shows a year in the same state that you're in. Instead of doing that, instead of practicing singing your songs once a week in a garage somewhere or at your friend's house, make content online, focus on this, like getting songs produced and releasing content consistently. But the biggest mistake I see is that people will be doing rehearsals once a week or practicing once a week the same five songs, getting drunk, doing whatever, having fun, and just like, you know, just so that they can play three or four shows that they've got lined up that year. You know, that's like meeting up. That's like what there's like 50 something Fridays in a year. Those 50 times you guys could meet up even talking about, you know, your next merch drop or, you know, how you're going to get this next song to do well or reaching out to people. I would say for bands, you will go way farther. Just every time, instead of meeting up for practice, if you, you can still meet up for practice, but for the first 10 minutes, just send 10 emails or 10 DMs. Don't even, doesn't even, you don't even need to know what those DMs or emails are, but you need to be reaching out to things constantly. And there's no end to how many people you could be reaching out to, whether that's trying to get a sponsorship, trying to get on a show, trying to get a collab, trying to get on a YouTube channel. You know what I mean? Playing your part super tight for 40 kids doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> In the beginning, I mean, that's just my opinion, you know? That's like the evil record label guy opinion. Because everyone just wants to, like, play shows once a month, meet up once a week at their friend's house, hang out, practice the songs that they wrote with their friends, talk about girls, talk about boys. And that's, what, and that's like, all they do, you know? I would say you're just wasting a, a lot of time, you know what I mean? Yeah, the worst somebody could say is no. The worst somebody could say is no if you just bother them, like you said earlier. Just bother the label, bother, bother the sponsors. The worst they could I, say is I no. I personally try and do the 10 email thing a day myself. I don't know who I'm going to email, what I'm going to email, but one of my artists needs something, needs this, needs that. There's nothing, you know, everyone is always in constant need of, of something, you know? So it's like practicing once a week isn't going to help, isn't going to fulfill those needs, you know? Mm-hmm. It's, and it's like touring is a lot different. It's not the 70s and 80s anymore with the internet. The internet is the biggest stage in the world, you know? So it's not like in the in the 80s and, and like 90s and even 70s, bands could tour and get really big off of touring. You know, there's been very few bands that have gotten like really big just solely off of touring, you know, in the last few years. You know, I would say like, one of the biggest bands from, from touring is probably Knocked Loose. Like, those dudes are playing, like, everywhere at all the, all the cool hardcore shows and all the VFW halls and all the, like, across the whole United States. <laughs> you know what I mean? For years. And then, like, you know, they're playing, like, Palladiums and stuff now, which is cool. But, yeah, for the most part, I would say just, you know, you got to reach out to more people. You can't just expect... It's like goes back to the thing like you can't go outside and scream at the sky for a record deal. Uh, you can't just email someone and then not hear back and think, you know, that's it. <laughs> it's you've got to keep it emailing people like you've got to hear 100 no's before you hear one yes. And that's like how it is with everything. For it. Then it's like that. It's that all the way to the top. And that that never ends. It only gets more diluted. 
<laughs> you, you, I love you know. it. I love it, dude. I, I appreciate the advice, man. It's the, the the knowledge, everything. This is a lot of fun today. We're we're out of time, but uh, this was this is an absolute blast. Thanks for hanging out with us today, Greg. We appreciate yeah, absolutely. it. And uh, I, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Don't be a stranger. Maybe we can do this again in the future. And uh, if you guys enjoyed any of the music we played from any of the artists on his roster, Anson, Mon, uh, Monty's on, uh, Osatia. Please, please support them. They totally deserve it. They're they're fantastic. But uh, Greg, have an excellent day. Thank you, sir. You too, dude. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you. We are traveling yeah. and grotesque. Greg Long. <laughs> <laughs>